With the newest drivers from AMD that just came out today, AMD has enabled AMD Fluid Motion Frames for integrated graphics based on RDNA 3. So we're going to be testing out on the Minisform UM780 XTX with the Ryzen 7 7840HS to see if AMD's HyperRX feature, which now enables frame generation, to see if it could actually boost performance in games on this system, specifically at 1440p. Now I've been testing testing this all day today and I've mostly been playing the games that I've regularly been playing recently that way I could really compare what the difference would be in terms of smoothness and responsiveness with the frame generation so the first game that I actually took a look at on this system with the new driver was actually killing floor 2 since I've been playing it a lot recently so I'm familiar with what the performance is supposed to be like now at 1440p with the lowest in-game graphic seven settings the performance that we get out of the game itself already is pretty decent with almost a 100 fps average and one percent lows that are practically at 60 it really already is a pretty great experience of course i could turn up some of the graphics settings just to really put some pressure onto this thing but i wanted to try out two different scenarios one where the fps that we're getting is already pretty decent and one where things are almost to the point of playability so here with killing floor 2 we're already getting some great performance just at 1440p natively but if we pull up the AMD Adrenaline Overlay and actually enable the Hyper RX Profile, which pretty much turns on Super Resolution, turns on AMD Fluid Motion Frames, and it turns on Anti-Lag, and we drop the in-game resolution down to 1080p, the performance uplift that we see is really not as dramatic as I was expecting to see, but we were already in a scenario where we were getting some pretty great performance. Certainly, the game still feels really nice to play, though I don't really know what those generated frames are doing here. I don't really feel like the game is any more responsive, any smoother, and actually we do see a regression in terms of our FPS average and even our 1% lows see a slight drop off. Now, perhaps this would open up some headroom for us to turn up some graphics settings, but I'm not even 100% sure on that, considering that we are seeing 100% utilization of the GPU. The driver does tell you itself that frame generation does have a performance overhead, and it might just be that Killing Floor 2 is not a game that pairs very well with all of that, but in general, this is kind of a downgrade because we had to drop the resolution down to 1080p, and what we're using for upscaling here is essentially FSR1. That's what the Radeon Super Resolution is. It's just a driver implementation of FSR and specifically FSR1, not FSR2 because FSR2 needs to be directly implemented by a game. FSR1 is essentially a filter and so we're already using that here. We're using the frame generation from AMD and we're using anti-lag. And while I don't feel any increase in latency or anything like that, in general I don't really feel any improvement to the overall gaming experience in this title. Really, it wasn't until I dropped things down to 720p and just used the Hyper RX to upscale that to 1440p that we actually saw a pretty substantial uplift in terms of performance. Where now we're looking at FPS in the hundreds for both our 1% lows and our FPS average. But unfortunately, you are sacrificing quite a lot for the visual quality here since we are going from 720p up to 1440p. Visually speaking, this is pretty rough. Now, it does give us the performance headroom here to turn everything up to ultra if we'd like but no matter what we do to the graphics settings it's really not going to end up making up for the loss of detail that comes from such a low resolution and then upscaling that with fsr1 because remember this is not fsr2 where fsr2 already isn't perfect in terms of upscaling quality but it was a significant improvement over fsr1 unfortunately here we do have to sacrifice quite a lot visually if we want to see some substantial performance increases but if you're trying to hit that high fps it might just be worth it for you and at least the option is there to play around with a resolution that works best for you now i did also encounter some problems specifically i was trying to get this to work with pal world since pal world is a title that doesn't really want run very well on this system unfortunately i couldn't get it to work and the reason being is that a big component and really the biggest performance 
performance uplift that you get from using a hyper rx is actually the fact that you're pretty much using fsr and the way that that works is that you need to drop your in-game resolution down and the driver will automatically upscale that up to your native resolution for your display now to get that to work you need to be in a full screen mode the way that pal works is that if you go full screen it goes to your native resolution and if you go windowed then you can adjust your resolution so since i can't adjust my full screen resolution i can't get the driver to actually upscale it for me i would have to use a third party upscaling tool and when i tried to use that with the frame generation the results were disastrous and of course another key issue is the fact that this only works with directx 11 and directx 12 titles so a title like doom 2016 here which runs on vulcan or OpenGL, is not compatible with it now the results that we get out of the game at the native 1440p are decent enough but it would have been nice to see what we could squeeze out with some more aggressive settings but unfortunately it just does not work with this and i don't know why it doesn't work with vulcan i feel like amd really needs to get that functional because it makes no sense for it to not work like that now the next title that i wanted to take a look at was insurgency sandstorm i've been playing this a lot recently as well and on this mini pc i was actually really impressed with its performance because at 1440p native resolution at the medium in-game graphic settings the performance was pretty decent but we're not exactly hitting a 60 fps average still the one percent lows were not half bad at all and in general it is passable though it would be nice to get a improvement in the overall performance here specifically if we could see those one percent lows get as close to 60 as possible that would really make things feel a lot smoother now once i turn on the hyper rx profile and drop the in-game resolution down to 900p we do actually see a pretty nice uplift in both the one percent lows and the fps average here and in general the game feels really nice to play like this again i don't really know what the frame generation is doing here it doesn't exactly feel like i'm getting substantially higher performance but certainly the combination of both the fsr the anti-lag and the frame generation is at least making the experience here noticeably better and i think these are going to be the titles where this feature is going to be the most useful for the games that are almost there in terms of being playable but could just benefit from a slight bump to really push things to the most comfortable level now i haven't tried what good frame generation is supposed to be like quote unquote so i haven't tried dlss3 i haven't even tried fsr3 implemented on anything directly in game in theory this is pretty much what fsr3 is though of course with the fsr implementation on an actual fsr3 game being just inherently better because it's going to be based off of fsr2 instead of fsr1 that is just a filter but what we're essentially getting here is a more generic version of fsr3 and while it's not going to be a miracle for a lot of titles out there it might just be enough to bump up the experience but the problem with it being based off of fsr1 is that there is a noticeable impact in terms of the visuals if you drop that resolution down significantly especially at a resolution 1440 if you drop down to 1080p there is a pretty noticeable drop off in quality though the uplift in performance a lot of the times will be worth it but of course that comes down to personal preference i'm definitely excited to try out this feature in a wide variety of different games so far i've tried it with some of the older far cry games as well but i'm currently just compiling a huge list of games to do for a big video but so far it has been very interesting to try out today so let me know what your experience has been so far have you found this to be a useful feature or is it one of those things that feels more like a gimmick than anything else let me know down below and i'll catch you guys in the next one